Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to make some amazing smothered beef shanks. Let's go. All right, guys, here we have our beef shanks. We have two packs here. There's two packs in each shank. The shank is actually located right above the knee on the cow. It could be a little tough because it's a working muscle, but we're going to get it spoon tender just wait and see we've got some green pepper orange pepper onion we're using granulated garlic and onion salt and black pepper we're going to use a little bit of flour and some beef stock that's basically all it's going to take and it's going to be amazing so here i have my shanks i've got them all cleaned up and ready to be seasoned up you can see how they look they have that big femur bone uh, running right through them so you know, when we're done with them, like I said, that bone is going to fall right out of that meat and it's going to be spoon tender. It's going to be so good. So what we're going to do to season them up, I'm just going to season them uh, liberally with some uh, Himalayan sea salt, some black pepper, granulated garlic, and granulated onion. We want to go fairly uh, liberal on the seasoning because, you know, that, that seasoning is also going to help. Uh, season our gravy when we make it. We're going to season the gravy up as well But I like to make sure that my meat is seasoned fairly liberal when I'm making smothered meat to make sure that everything uh, comes together nicely Let me know down in the comment section if you've ever had beef shanks before uh, What you think of them? How did you prepare them? You can cook them more than this smothered. I love them smothered, but they're actually really good uh, smoked as well. You smoke them for a little while and then braise them off to get them tender or you can just smoke them all the way through until they get tender. Either way they turn out very good and uh, I really really like them. Alright, going to get seasoned up real well. Heavy with the garlic and the onion. Then we're just going to uh, flip these bad boys over and repeat the process. Alright guys, we're at the stove here and I just have some regular all-purpose flour. We're going to lightly uh, flour our shanks and then we're going to brown them off i have just a very very shallow uh bed of oil in my pan we're not trying to fry them all we're trying to do is uh brown them off so a uh, little garlic little pepper little onion in the uh in the flour and we're just going to take them and put them directly into that hot grease just trying to get a nice little brown on them uh before we go ahead and make our gravy All right, guys, we've got them all down. We're just going to let them go for a few minutes until they get nice and golden brown. Then we're going to flip these bad boys over and repeat the process. So you can see now we've got a nice little golden brown color on them. That's exactly what we're looking for. Like I said, we're not trying to cook these things all the way through. It's going to take a while before they get tender. But we are wanting to get a nice little uh, crust on them. It's going to help with our gravy and it's going to and help with the flavor uh, of our dish. All right, we got them all flipped over, so we're just gonna repeat the process, let them go another three to four minutes until they're nice and brown, and we're gonna pull them out. All right, guys, so we've got, a, uh, got the color we want on them, so we're just gonna pull them off, and then we're going to begin to build our gravy. We're gonna use the same oil that we, use, that we fried them in. We're gonna keep those little bits at the bottom of the pan. That is flavor. We're not worried about none of that, and we're gonna go ahead and build up our uh, our gravy. So we use about a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil to fry those in or to brown them off in. So we're going to go in with the uh, same amount of flour. So you want to have a one to one ratio when you're building a gravy. I am not looking for that 40 weight gravy. I want more of a thinner gravy uh, this time. So uh, I'm, not, I'm going to add a little bit more liquid uh, to my gravy this time because again, I'm looking for a little bit more of a thinner gravy to go over some potatoes. I don't want it really, really thick this time. Oftentimes, I like a really, really thick gravy or that 40 weight. But sometimes, I like it a little thin and flavorful as well. So, that's what we're going for. It's not necessarily going to be thin, but it's definitely not going to be thick. It's going to be nice and silky. So, what you want to do is you want to go in with your flour to your oil. And you just want to continue to keep stirring uh, to make sure you have no kind of lumps or clumps in it. And also, we're not building a roux. We're just trying to cook that flour until we get that floury taste out of it. So you don't have to cook it for a real long time, but you do want to cook it for a few minutes just to, re, uh, to remove that flour, floury flavor 
uh, from your gravy. So after a few minutes, we're gonna go ahead on and add in our seasoning. So we're adding in some fresh cracked black pepper, some salt, garlic, and onion. Basically the same seasonings that we seasoned up our meat with, that's the same seasonings we're going into our gravy with. Give everything a stir, let it go for a few more minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our veggies. So I just wound up using half of the green, half of the orange, and half of the onion. And we're just going to take a little bit of each one and put it into the skillet now and begin to uh, build up our gravy. You don't have to add, you can add it in all right now if you want to, but I like to top the meat with some of the uh, peppers as well uh, when I'm cooking it. So that's why I'm not adding it all in right now. So you just want to go ahead and let your onions and stuff go for just a few minutes. You're not trying to completely cook them. But we are just getting some of that raw flavor out of them and sauteing them up in that flour and oil mixture until we go ahead and add in the meat. It's not going to be long, just a few minutes. Okay, so once we've let those veggies saute for just a few minutes, we're going to go in and add in our beef stock. Now I'm putting in two cups of beef stock right now, and then we're going to top our meat with the other two stock uh, cups of beef stock. So we're using four cups in total. And you can see right now, uh, how it's starting to thicken up already now before we add in the other two cups This would be probably a uh, that 40 weight gravy that we speak of but again I wanted a little bit thinner. That's why we're adding in the extra liquid to this So once you uh, put your liquid in you just want to continue to stir again making sure that you have no clumps or bumps or lumps in your gravy um, Nobody likes a lumpy gravy at least I don't so once you have it nice and smooth and stirred up, we're gonna go ahead and put our beef shanks back into the gravy. The house is smelling amazing right now. Mouth is watering because I already know how good this is going to be when it's done. You do wanna to try to make sure that you uh, have enough room in your skillet to make sure that your meat is fully submerged. You really don't wanna have any pieces sticking out. If possible, you want it to uh, be down in that gravy while it's uh, smothering. So you make sure that you have a big enough skillet uh, to do what you got to do. So once we've got our meat down back into our skillet, we're going to go ahead on and add in the rest of those peppers and onions. Again, I told you I like to top mine uh, with peppers and onions and then put some at the bottom as well. And that's what we're doing. All right. So once we have that, we're going to go in now and add in the last two cups of our beef stock. All right, we got everything in there. Meat's covered nicely. Peppers and onions on there, and it's starting to simmer already. And we're just gonna simmer this on low for about 45 minutes to an hour. Then we're gonna come back and check it. So it's been going for about 45 minutes now, and you can see it has a nice rolling simmer going on. And we're just trying to check and see how tender we are right now. Now these shanks have a lot of connective tissue in them. So what you're trying to do is just break down those con connective tissues and render out the fat. And uh, they're getting close. You can see now that the bone is starting to separate from the meat, but we still have a little bit of ways to go. So we're gonna just flip them over a little bit to make sure that uh, we get all sides and all uh, surface area able to be submerged in that gravy and smothering in that gravy or braising in that gravy. So we're just gonna flip the last one over, cover that bad boy back up, and continue to let it go until this meat becomes spoon tender. All right, y'all. Now we've had it going another 25 minutes or so. We're going to go ahead and check it. Oh yeah. And you can just see how it's falling apart. How that bone just fell right out of that meat. So now this is exactly what we want. It is perfectly tender. Just look at that. It's going to be so good. So let's go ahead and guys and get plated up. And I can let you see what we're working with. All right, here's our plate. Got it over a bed of potatoes with that nice silky gravy. Here's a spoon. I just want you to see. Look at that. Now fork tender, spoon tender, no knife necessary. Pipe it hot, go ahead and get a bite. Mm, mm, mm. 
Look at that, how that bone just fell right out of there. This is amazing, guys. So, so good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I have some more amazing videos coming out. Uh, sorry it's been a while. I've been real, real busy lately, but I'm back at it. And I hope to see you guys back around in the kitchen. Till the next time, God bless, and we'll see you next time.